Hey everyone, something that was really difficult for me as a young flutist was finding that perfect instrument. So I decided to make a series of videos to walk you through what it is that I look for when I'm flute shopping and to talk through some of the options that you're going to have to decide between. But if I'm going to be making all these videos to show you the ins and outs of flute shopping, I'm gonna need a lot of flutes. So I partnered up with the Flute Center of New York who is allowing me to make the series for you and also providing me with all the instruments that you'll see in this video. One thing that I love about the Flute Center is that you don't have to just be in New York to work with them. They ship worldwide. They have fantastic customer service and they will help you find that perfect instrument. So make sure to ask them any questions that you might have. Finally, they have every single flute brand that you can imagine. So whatever it is you're looking for, they've got it. And what's really cool is I've created some special bonuses for you guys, so if you buy a flute from them, you're really gonna get hooked up. If you use my code Gina, you will receive free shipping, a 10-day trial instead of a 7-day trial, an 18-month warranty, which is normally only one year, and for a limited time, you will receive a free download of one of my albums. You can set up your trial by calling or emailing the Flute Center, and don't forget to mention Gina to unlock all of your bonuses. Okay, let's get started. Today I'm going to go into some of the flute options that you can choose for your instrument when you're buying either an intermediate or a professional flute. Make sure to check out my last video to learn more about some of the basic flute options that you can choose from. One of the most popular options is the split E mechanism. High E is notorious for cracking, so that's why they developed the split E mechanism to make high E easier to play. What this does is it closes the G key right here. By closing this key, it makes the high E more stable. Now it isn't completely necessary to have this, but it does help a lot. My last professional flute that I had did not have the split E mechanism, but the new one does have it. Although I'm used to playing with the split E mechanism on my current flute, when I go back to my old flute that doesn't have the split E mechanism, it isn't impossible to play the high E's. I will say though that I am very happy that I have this option on my current flute. Another popular option is the C sharp trill key. This is the C sharp trill key lever. What it does is it opens the C sharp trill tone hole and it makes it much easier to trill between B and C sharp and high G and A flat. I love having this option on my flute. Moving your pinky around the foot joint is every flutist's worst nightmare, so this next option is one that I would highly recommend. And that is the D sharp and C sharp rollers. These are two of the options that I chose for my flute and it makes my life a lot easier. You don't have to add both of them, but I personally like to have the two. Here you can see a foot joint with no rollers, one with just the D-sharp roller, and one with both the D-sharp and C-sharp rollers. You can also choose to have a heavy wall, and the heavy wall refers to having a thicker tubing on the flute. The standard thickness is 0.016 inches, and a heavy wall is 0.018 inches. Most beginner and intermediate flutes come with a standard wall. Heavy wall is known for having an extra dark sound and it is perfect for people who use a lot of air while playing. Not as many people know about thin wall flutes, which is 0.014 inches. Thin wall flutes are known for their amazing flexibility and response. A lot of people love the look of an engraved flute and it's a great way to make your instrument look unique. Parts of the flute that can be engraved are the lip plate, the crown, and the keys. You can have your flute engraved either when you order it or you can send it in at a later point to have it done. Engraving is mostly done for decoration, however, having it on the lip plate can help a lot with slipping. I actually have one of my head joints engraved. The next option that I'm going to look at is a regular versus pinless mechanism. A regular or pinned mechanism is when the keys are connected by a series of pins that are drilled through the flute's steel rods. When you have a pinless mechanism, it connects the keys by a series of bridges that then allow the keys to pivot freely on the steel rods. With a pinless mechanism, it feels a lot more fluid while you're playing, and since there are no holes in the rods, it makes them a lot stronger. This is another option that I chose for my flute. Now let's talk about risers. The riser is the donut-shaped disc that connects the lip plate to the head joint tube. Look closely and you'll be able to see the gold riser on this head joint. You can have silver, gold, and platinum risers. Silver gives a full sound and is flexible. Gold has a warmer sound and provides more resistance. Platinum risers have a dark sound and the most resistance. The last option that I'm going to talk about is drawn and soldered tone holes. Beginner, intermediate, and a lot of professional flutes have drawn tone holes. The way that they create drawn tone holes is by physically drawing out the holes of the flute's tube. For soldered tone holes, they make them separately and then attach them to the flute. Since the soldered tone holes are thicker and heavier, they provide more resistance and give the flute a darker sound. 
Drawn tone holes give the flutist more flexibility and response since they are lighter and thinner. My current flute has solder tone holes and my last flute had drawn tone holes so I think both of them have a lot of advantages. For the full specs on all the flutes that you saw in the video today, make sure to check out the description below. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks again to the Flute Center of New York. I talk flutes the first Monday of every month so make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and like my Facebook page.